Hello again. Today, we're going to look at a job for girls that concerned all the time with serving the public. It's the work of the post office telephonist. Now, how do you set about becoming a telephonist? What qualifications do you need? Well, in this post office leaflet I've got here, it says that you don't need any previous experience if you're a woman between the ages of 15 and 51. You must be in good health. You must be not less than 4 feet 10 inches in height. It seems to let in most of us. And you must be able to write and to talk clearly. But there's a bit more to it than that. You've got to pass an interview and a series of simple tests before you're accepted for training. So let's start at the beginning and see what that involves. This is Marjorie. She's a London girl and she lives at home with her parents and younger sister. She likes reading and dancing and collecting pop records. Marjorie first got the idea of becoming a telephonist through a friend who just finished her training and liked the work. So Marjorie found out more about it, and then she applied for an interview at one of the GPO's recruitment centres. Waiting for an interview can be a bit like waiting at the dentist. But Miss Rhodes has interviewed hundreds of girls and she knows how they feel. So there's not much waiting about for Marjorie. Marjorie Louisa. Marjorie Louisa. And your address? 90's Avenue, Collier Row. 90's Avenue, Collier Row. Where is that? Brunkford. Oh, Miss Henshaw, how did you know we had vacancies? Went down to the youth employment. To the youth employment. A good interviewer always tries to put a candidate at her ease. Miss Rhodes starts off with some general questions and that gets Marjorie talking. 15th of February, 1948. How tall are you? Five foot three. Five three. Now, this is quite important to us because we have very high switchboards and we must make quite sure that you can reach the top of the board, you see. Are you British? Yes. Now, what type of school did you go to? Technical. Now, there are a series of tests to judge your suitability for this type of work. First one is a handwriting and spelling test. Now, I'd like you to put your full name at the top of that paper. Take a use our pen. I want your normal handwriting, not capital letters. Put your full name. Now, I'm going to give you a list of words and I want you to write them down, one underneath the other. The first one is, apologize. Handwriting and spelling are most important because a telephonist has to fill in details on a ticket Excuse. as she's dealing with the call. Now, this ticket is used later when customers' phone bills are being worked out, so an operator must be able to write clearly. No mistakes. Search. Particular. Thank you. The next is a hearing test. Now take this piece of paper and put your name at the top. Now I'm going to call over the telephone to a list of well-known place names. Each one will be followed by a four-figured number. I want you to write them down as I give them to you. Right. This is also a hearing test. I won't repeat anything. If you don't hear me, just leave a space and go on to the next one. Can you tell me this picture? Yes. I guess we'll just say yes. Each time you finish writing, then I'll know when you're ready for me to go on with the next one. The first one is Southampton 1784. Right. 
Sheffield 9559. When a telephonist is working, she always wears her headset. Red so Marjorie's hearing is tested through the same kind of headset as she'd have in an exchange. This, of course, is a test she mustn't fail. Blackburn Miss Rhodes always marks the test as she goes along. Looks as if Marjorie's doing all right so far. That's very good, Miss Henschleff. Now, I want you to read from this card for me so that I can hear your voice on the telephone. I should be listening particularly for your tone and your diction. Number, please. What number are you calling, please? I'm sorry, there is no reply. I'm trying to connect you. The clearer your voice, the better. But you can be taught the right kind of inflections to use. Could you put a little more strength into your voice and sound more business-like, say, Temple Bar 2192? Temple Bar 2192. Primrose 7373. Silverthorn 8769. Beside you is a list of towns listed in alphabetical order. I want you to find one as I give you the name and look it up and quote for me the letter shown in the left-hand column beside it. The first one is Mayfair. This test is for speed and alertness. The card index is called a VIF, Visible Index File which is what telephonists look up to find out how a call should be connected. Marjorie will be seeing a lot of this if she gets the job. Oh, Heathfield, Jill, Leatherhead, one year. I thank you. Will you take your headset off now? And come over here, please. I'm going to give you the eyes first. Now you cover your right eye, with your right hand, and stop the top and read down the card. Obviously, a telephonist has to have good eyesight, but this is just a preliminary test. If Marjorie gets the job, she'll become a civil servant, and this means she'll have to take a, a full medical before she's finally accepted. Now just one thing, I noticed that you are left-handed. Can you die with your right hand? Oh, yes. You can. Now, you have passed all the tests satisfactorily, and I will recommend you for training. Will you come with me? There are a few forms that I would like you to fill in so that we may take our lessons. And we'll be about later on the day of training. Thank you. So Marjorie passed all her tests, and in a few weeks she'll start training. Now there's one important point to make here. Marjorie is a London girl, so she was interviewed and tested at one of the two main London centres. If you live outside central London, you'll probably be interviewed at your local telephone manager's office where the atmosphere is a bit less formal. It won't make any difference to the questions or the tests that you take, they're the same everywhere. Anyway, let's move on and see what kind of training Marjorie is getting. Now, the next training really means back to school for a while. Marjorie's learning about the different types of calls, dialing, connections, all the things she'll soon be doing regularly. And the call that you take from a subscriber, you make a ticket out for, okay? The men in the class are also training to be telephonists, but they'll be employed on night duties only. Remembering to mark off, this is called the marking panel. 
Mrs. Retta, Marjorie's instructor, is running over the ticket on which telephonists book details of each call they handle. So we'll just run through it. Um, Mrs. Lane, could you tell me please what goes on this line? The exchange that the kind of requires. All right. We'll assume then that he wants to call to... Uh... The details vary depending on the type of call. But the caller's number and the number he asks for are always put down. On this line? The number that the subscriber requires. That, that is the number that the subscriber wanted. So it's one, two, three, four. Right, now what must I have from Mrs. Lane from the subscriber next? Subscriber's own exchange and number. His number, fine. And remember, we only write the first three letters of the exchange. That's all we need. And mark his number off in the marking panel. An important part of classroom training is constant revision. Once you start work in a telephone exchange, you follow a set routine in connecting and booking calls. And the earlier this becomes familiar, the better. Right in the center of the number. But it's not all classroom instruction. There's only one way in which you can really learn a job, and that's to do it. So an important part of the training at the school is in the dummy switch room. and equipment here are just the same as in an ordinary exchange, except that they're not connected outside. Marjorie's class comes here twice a day for practice, and they're watched over and helped by supervisors who sit just behind them, looking at and listening to the way they handle calls. The calls are made from the next room by instructors who pretend to be outside callers, other operators, and the people being called. In this way, they can make the calls seem as realistic as possible. I will. Could I have call two two three five four, please? When she's asked for a number, Marjorie writes it down on the ticket. And my number is Metropolitan six nine three nine. Metropolitan six nine three nine. VIF tells her how to connect the call, the number to dial. Then it's plug in and dial as you've been taught. Well, as you saw there, Marjorie's training was divided between the classroom and the dummy telephone exchange. And uh, her class would also, under their instructor, spend a few days at a live exchange to get the feel of things. But here again, this kind of training might not be exactly what you get. It all depends on the arrangements in your own local area. And anyway, the post office has recently introduced a scheme whereby telephonists start their training from the very first day in live exchanges. The point is, though, that however you're trained, you'll be doing the same kind of things as you saw Marjorie and her class doing. You're given a thoroughly good grounding before you start off work on your own. Now, the next step is the telephone exchange itself. We filmed Marjorie at training school. Since then, she's moved on as a fully-fledged telephonist to a London telephone exchange. Let's see what working there is like. This is the switch room, the hub of the exchange. The operators deal with 100 traffic, where a caller can't dial direct but has to go through the exchange. There are also plenty of inquiries, personal calls and emergencies. But although the telephone service is being more and more mechanised, operators will always be needed. The 999 board, which is always manned. Once the light goes on and the buzzer sounds, the operator drops everything.
On emergency calls, the time taken to answer should always be better than average. Marjorie is now doing every day what she did many times at the training school. But this time, there are members of the public on the other end of the line. Some of them can be awkward too. The supervisor is always at hand to give the official answer. Can I help you? Well, I'm awfully sorry, but I, I don't deal with this matter. I'll connect you to the traffic superintendent. Oh, no, please. Could you connect to the traffic superintendent, please? One thing Marjorie has had to learn quickly is the need for punctuality. The girls work shifts and they go to meals at different times. So you must go to lunch and come back from it at the correct time. Otherwise, another operator might suffer. Lunch and tea breaks are the times for relaxing and catching up on what your friends have been doing. When you're working on the board, there's not much time for talking to your neighbour. You tend to live in your own little world, hearing voices, but never seeing the faces. But it's a bit different off duty. Back in the exchange, it's hardly ever dull. You do the same things, it's true. You plug in, fill in your ticket, look up the VIF. You even say the same things. But the people you deal with are always different. Go ahead, Paul, you're through. National 6141. Marjorie is just one of 60 girls in her exchange, and she's one of the newest. What does she think about her job so far? Well, I think it's very interesting. I mean, it doesn't look it, you just sit, it looks as though you're just sitting at a board all the time, but you're not, you're moved from different boards, different positions. You're taking uh, all kinds of calls. And um, it gets a bit tiring, but all jobs do, I think. And the lady's very good, you know, you get over what it is. You're not meeting people, you're talking to different kinds of people, you know, you're sort of understanding what they're, what they're like without having to meet them. I'm glad I did it because I, I think it's a good job. It's marvellous, isn't it? Well, Marjorie seems pretty happy in her job so far. Now, what about pay? Well, as a telephonist, you get paid according to your age. If you live outside London, you'll start off at the age of 15 at about £5 a week, and you'll go up to nearly £9 a week by the time you're 20. In London, the rates are a bit higher. And there are also quite a few benefits. Luncheon vouchers, if you're under 19, good sick pay, social clubs. And you get three weeks, fully paid holiday a year. Now, as for promotion, there are good opportunities if you want to get on. All the supervisors and telephone exchanges started off as telephonists. One thing you've got to be prepared for is occasional Saturday work. You'll work in shifts, but you won't work at nights. And another thing we haven't shown you, that's the Continental Exchange in London. Now, to get accepted for this, you've got to be able to speak French to about O-level standard. So if you've got some French, it's a line that's worth thinking about. The Continental Exchange in London deals with all calls to and from England and the continent. A lot of different languages are spoken here, but French is the one you need. If you studied it to about O-level, you can get special instruction to bring you up to the necessary standard. And there's some extra money to the job because the language allowance is payable. Yes, I'm sorry, he's not expected until half past four our time. All in all, I hope we've told you enough about the job for you to be able to, be able to make up your own minds. Maybe you'd like to start off a discussion amongst yourselves by considering what are the essential qualities that a telephonist must have. Goodbye.